UPA 1 record was quite impressive. The UPA 2 record is not so impressive. It has faced a large number of difficulties uh, since 2010. Uh, I think the troubles of UPA 2, uh, 2 started with the anti-corruption movement, which was not handled uh, properly by, uh, by uh, uh, UPA 2. Ever since, uh, the, uh, it has been beleaguered and besieged, of course, by uh, corruption scams, by, uh, by governance problems, and also uh, a kind of policy paralysis, which seems to have overtaken uh, UPA 2. Uh, well, if you were to ask me what have been the achievements of UPA 2, uh, I would say it has mastered the art of survival. UPA 2 has demonstrated considerable resilience, uh, taking into account the fact uh, that it has faced such massive opposition, public protests, a major, uh, a major mass protest on corruption, against the gang rape in uh, Delhi in uh, December 2013 uh, and so on. Uh, so I think if, yeah, there, and of course, uh, two of its major allies have left uh, the UPA, that is to say, uh, the Mamta Banerjee's TMC as well as the DMK. Despite that, it has survived. So I would say uh, resilience and survival seem to, have, uh, seem to be its major achievements. Unlike UPA 1, where, where the UPA 1 was guided by a vision. It was guided by, um, I would say, a certain, uh, well, above what it had, uh, the uh, national co uh, program. So there was a vision, program. there was a program. Yeah. One of the basic issues with this government is that it doesn't seem to have a vision. There are probably very uh, major debates within the Congress. I would, not co I would even say there are ideological uh, debates uh, within the Congress in terms of what kind of direction the party should take, what should be the defining identity of the party. And I think there is also a debate between, uh, between let us say, uh, growth and equity or between mm -hmm. market and, uh, and social welfare. Uh, I think U uh, U UPA 1 was re-elected in 2009 uh, largely because of uh, the success of its welfare uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. Certainly the welfare agenda helped, but it was not just the welfare agenda. I think somewhere it was able to strike a balance between growth and equity. I would say uh, the, uh, very, uh, very, uh, this very interesting and significant attempt to balance growth and equity. Mm -hmm. And I think its emphasis on inclusiveness I think is certainly uh, is certainly very, very uh, in inclusiveness, inclusive. the idea of inclusive growth, although in UPA 1, there was, uh, in UPA 1, I think they managed to do both inclusion and growth. Mm -hmm. Now, in UPA 2, because of the, of the economic slowdown, right. I think both uh, inclusion has also suffered. They have not been able to do as much uh, on the front of inclusion. Secondly, I would say the, uh, the, uh, they have introduced a new development paradigm. And that is uh, that is a rights-based or entitlements uh, approach. That I think is is quite significant. I mean, the introduction of right to information, right to employment, right to education, and possibly uh, right, right, to uh, right to food. I think in 2014, uh, as indeed in previous elections, there won't be a single uh, mm -hmm. issue. I don't think there'll be one transcend transcendental issue right. that will transcend right. everything else and overshadow everything else. I think 2014 elections, you're not really going to have, I, it's unlikely that there's going to be a wave uh, as, for example, in 1977 against the Congress. Right. I, I doubt if, there were, uh, I don't think it will be that. Mm -hmm. So so there'll be a combination, uh, combination of issues. And I would say uh, it will again be a combination of national issues as well as uh, state issues. But in my view, uh, the, uh, the big issues, of course, in, uh, in 2014 would be corruption, governance, secularism. But above all, I think I would say the whole issue of um, equity, social protection, and accountability. Mm -hmm. I think these will be uh, the big issues. 
Rahul Gandhi's uh, leadership, you know, his leadership uh, will be tested, I think, in, in 2014, notwithstanding his reluctance uh, to, be, uh, to be declared as a prime ministerial candidate and possibly even his reluctance to, uh, to be the prime minister in the foreseeable future. He will still be uh, leading the campaign although it would not be stated as such. But I think it is rather early, in my view, to, uh, to assess or pass a judgment, uh, judgment on his leadership. His record is clearly mixed, which is to say, uh, I, mean, he has, uh, I mean, he has done well uh, in, in, uh, when he has led the campaign in some states, but, he, but his big test really is North India and UP in particular. True. Because the Congress has to regain, uh, regain, uh, regain support and it's uh, regain support in UP. Now, in 2009, uh, the Congress un uh, under Rahul Gandhi did quite well, did very well in, uh, in the 2009 Lok Sabha election, but it did very badly in the uh, Assembly elections in 2011. Secondly, I think uh, Rahul Gandhi will have to define his vision, uh, his vision uh, in a way in which I think Mrs. Gandhi, that is to say his mother, uh, Sonia Gandhi, did uh, define a vision, which was, in my view, a social democratic uh, vision. Now, it's not clear whether Rahul Gandhi fully subscribes to uh, Sonia Gandhi's vision. I think to some extent he does. But I think uh, he's also, it seems, quite take, taken by, uh, by, let us say, uh, I mean, he is, he does give a lot of importance to growth, one of the big criticisms of, uh, of uh, Rahul Gandhi, and I think to some extent it's a fair criticism, is that he has uh, uh, he's focused on party and party management and, and party democratization, which is good, but but that's not that's not enough. If you're going to be a national leader and you're going to be a prime minister in the future, uh, you can't just be a party manager. You have to uh, you have to be a leader, which means you have to define your vision.